Hi guys, Sean over here from Team Xbox at Microsoft. Um, we're here with five essential apps and hacks that you can use to set up your Surface Pro X and Pro 7. Now that you've probably purchased or researched this device, uh, Black Friday season's coming up. So full disclosure, I'm not part of the Surface team or the marketing or the engineering team, so these recommendations, they're strictly my own. Um, you all responded very well to my Surface Pro X review, where I said the Surface Pro X was the most misunderstood device of 2019 because it's a Windows on ARM experiment to get the benefits of mobile chips, kind of the portability, the leanness, the LTE connectivity, and get it up to the speeds of the iPad Pro, which runs blazing fast, but it's not running on traditional Intel chips. So Windows on ARM is an experiment, and those who downloaded the Chromium Canary Edge build um, in the beta channel, well, thank you for doing that because you verified that it indeed runs faster on the Surface Pro X, and so we're here for follow-ups on additional apps and setup tips, and a lot of this applies to the Surface Pro 7 as well, because that same Canary build can be downloaded on the Surface Pro 7, and the application the web apps kind of pinning those your favorite websites to the start menu so they kind of appear like native apps um, apply to the Pro 7 as well. So these are your setup tips for both devices. So let's jump into it. So number one, in the Chromium Edge Canary build, download that. And if you haven't seen it in the Pro X review, it also applies to the Pro 7 in many ways because you get all the leanness of the open source Chromium uh, mission and partnership that Google has for both Firefox and Edge. Getting that leaner build will make your browser much faster. It'll allow you to have extensions and at least the Edge version of the beta will allow you to pin your favorite apps and kind of have them run like native apps such as Disney Plus or Netflix or banking. We go into that fully in our Surface Pro X, how it's the most misunderstood review. Download those and you can have Disney Plus on your taskbar, on your start menu, and it'll pop up like a window and it won't have the Edge browser, kind of the taskbar on top. It'll just look like you launch a native app and it's going to run very smoothly just like it was running on pure Chrome that was optimized. That also applies on the Pro 7. Downloading that and getting your favorite websites and apps and that should get you about 80-90% there with the tablet use cases. Now number two, very important one, and I might make a video specifically on this, the Your Phone app. The Your Phone app, you can find that in the Windows Store. It's both on the Surface Pro X, it's on the Pro 7. It's mainly for all the PCs out there. The Your Phone app will allow you to text message from your Surface device. The Pro X, it takes advantage of the LTE connectivity because it connects directly to your phone and it syncs all your app notifications, messages, and photos. So the way it works is you download it, you set it up, you get the Your Phone app on Here's Our Galaxy Fold, your Android device. It's great for the Pro X because while you're checking your laptop or browsing, running your emails, you hear the vibration across the room that you got a text message. You don't have to go up, you don't have to shift around in your bed or shift around in your pocket to see what message you got. You can message and respond back right in the app. Usually when you're in your workflow, you assume, what did I miss, right? Say you're watching a show or you know, just web browsing and you're like, what, what did I miss? Notifications, any social media stuff. You trust more your phone notifications to update you on what you've missed. I don't really trust Chrome notifications. I get some Outlook notifications on here, but I would say the phone implementation has done it best. And the Your Phone app takes all your notifications, puts them in a nice little um, section of the app and you can kind of see, hey, I got a Snapchat, an Instagram email response. Uh, there was a time where I didn't charge my phone enough or I left it in the car um, or it was dying battery so I just plug it in and I'm able to take this LTE connected Surface Pro X anywhere I am and I can still text from afar because the LTE connects to the internet, the internet connects to the phone and I can sync my messages from there so I get native texting on the Surface Pro X. Now you can't make calls um, but texting and seeing all those notifications and a seamless integration on Windows will get you there. And this is available on not only the Pro X, but also the Pro 7 or the Pro series of devices, basically Windows 10. Something that complements the Pro X and the LTE connectivity very well. Number three. Now let's talk about the browsers for the Pro X. So not only is ARM 64 Edge Canary optimized for the Pro X, but Firefox has an ARM 64 version as well. 
Now I'm talking about the full experience of web browsing. And when I say full experience, you usually think Chrome and all its extensions, right? But Chrome and all its extensions are only on the x86 architecture and that will run on the Pro 7 well. What about the Pro X? Well, Firefox has a beta as well and you can download that right now, run it and it's a native for ARM64 Firefox browser with the beauty of all its extension. For all you extension junkies out there who like very specific that one extension, Firefox is basically the father of website extensions. So you can get your ad block, you can get all your readability, extensions out there, ghostery. But while I also like about having the native ARM64 build running smoothly on the Pro X is that the privacy features that Firefox is pivoting to. So you notice that in the native app, it stops things like social media tracking, um, and it just allows you more privacy features that I feel that web browsers are slowly moving towards in this interconnected world. So you get the leanness of the ARM64 architectures and you get the powerhouse of Firefox, which is also using that Chromium open source build. So that should streamline your web browsing for Firefox. You can use Edge Beta as well, the Canary build, to pin your favorite apps like Disney Plus. So using apps and using Firefox um, for your web browsing. Number four, Rain Meter. Rain Meter is something that, at least on the Pro X, I got the four gigabyte version and I can see right away kind of the specs or kind of the CPU usage or my network connectivity on this device. The benefits and leanness of Rain Meter and its skins and widgets will allow me to just take a brief glance at my desktop and see oh, I'm using all my RAM. I'm using all my CPU usage. Why is the Pro X, this mobile lean device, kind of hiccuping right now? Well, maybe I should close some apps. So that way I don't have to always go into Task Manager and I can be a little more cognizant and aware of the load that I'm putting on these devices to make sure it runs smoothly. Now I'm assuming you run Office, I'm assuming you're being uh, web browsing right there, so you don't have to open Task Manager all the time to see like, okay, I'm using up all my RAM, I'm using up all my CPU usage, and for the Pro X, assuming you have LTE connectivity and not an unlimited data plan, or even if you do, you don't want to get throttled, you can kind of see how much data is being uploaded off the computer or back onto the computer at any given time with Rain Meter, it's kind of its essential skin. So, Rain Meter is a great utility for Windows in general, but I feel like those uses apply a lot to the Surface Pro line. For those on the Pro 7 line, or who want to take it a little more to the extreme, Rain Meter is a great utility because it offers you skins, kind of music visualizers, or just different widgets that will kind of increase the CPU load, but you can get things like an on-screen mobile web player for Spotify, not that you need that, or very cool backgrounds or desktops or like Daft Punk faces with the nice little music visualizers. You can go crazy with that. I like it more for the utilities, kind of the leanness of it, keeping it lean on all the skins and all the widgets for Rain Meter, but you have the option to take it and really liven up your wallpaper or your desktop. So. The fifth and final recommendation for this are looking into kind of the native Windows apps that you don't use so much. So number one is enabling the keyboard, the on-screen keyboard, and enabling the on-screen mouse. We're going to go into a section called bed ability, uh, kind of how you use these devices if you're laying on the couch or laying on the bed. A secret hack or feature is that you can Usually when you're using your Surface Pro X um, in right before bedtime uh, or using your phones, usually the way we hold it is we like to have this little L sign, right? So you hold your phone, you kind of hold it like this and you hope it doesn't fall on your face, right? And all the pressure goes on your finger. And for the Pro X, it's like an iPad, right? And you're, just, you're able to take off this here. So it's the same thing. It's light enough where you can be in bed and you can hold it like an L here. Putting all this weight and pressure on your index finger gets uncomfortable during long browsing sessions. So all this pressure goes on your index finger, whether it's on your phone or an iPad. I've always had trouble with that. And unless you have a over the bed mount to put the tablet on so you can just stare right at it like a post Wally world, the Surface Pro has this great little hack here where you can just open this hinge and feel that it's very strong, it's very hot. It takes a lot of pressure to kind of push it out farther, but you can just put your hand right into here, right? Nice and easy. And you can hold the device up and you can do your browsing as you please. So 
what I mean by that is, notice I'm not doing that L shape anymore, right? I'm just putting my hand right into that. And that's great for over the bed because now I can review or watch all my videos and not have to have all that pressure. I get to use the full strength of my palm, of my hand to hold it up. And you notice that it doesn't extend this because the hinge is not that easy to open up. It's firm enough to hold the weight of the lightweight Surface Pro device. And coupled with that, this bedability function, with your enabled mouse here, this mouse will allow you to get to the corners lazily where I don't have to move my entire arm to the upper left hand section or to my favorites on the Edge browser here. And taking a look at this touchpad, it kind of gives you a preview into what the Surface Neo will look like. The laptop that has basically two screens and a detachable keyboard that's coming out next year because you can do all your gestures on the traditional mouse pad on here. And what I mean by that is you can scroll down with two fingers just like that, right? Or you can use three fingers and you can even change apps. So you can change apps right there and you can understand that this on-screen touchpad is the same as a touchpad that you would have if you were sitting up and having that key, that mouse trackpad right in front of you. You're laying in bed, you have this nice little hinge that you can place your palm in and not have to worry about dropping this on your face. And with your thumb here, you can do the same things, double click, right click on all your favorite things when you're reading this large scale of text or researching all your um, different Black Friday sales. With the little press of an X right here, you can hide it. So now you have the real estate of a tablet, the comfort of the kickstand, which isn't an official use case or recommendation for the, for the Surface Pro X or the Surface Pro 7, and this on-screen um, touchpad mouse as well that has your um, finger gestures, the 10 point gestures like zooming in, zooming out. And I use this pretty frequently when I'm too lazy and not, I don't want to have to go and keep going around the, this large screen, especially when I'm laying down and my arm is kind of closer to my chest and I don't need to extend it out. And a bonus one, let's talk about the Windows whiteboard um, and honorable mentions. So other native apps, you want to take advantage of the pens in both cases. Which I had the liberty to run into those who actually built Windows Ink or Windows Whiteboard app. And I would say it's a pretty great utility because you don't have to worry about downloading these like special PDF markup tools. You can just take a screenshot or draw through it. The Whiteboard app itself, you can change kind of the background so it can have like dotted line, build sketches. It's native enough, it's lean enough to run on both these devices pretty smoothly, but you can take a full screen snip without having to use snipping tool and you can use this pen. Press this back button, it'll launch Windows Whiteboard right away, and then you can just get drawing. There's no fuss about it, and it just works. It works natively if you just want to send a quick note, and you can share it to some apps out there. So you can create a new whiteboard here, and as you can see here, I can draw on it. So I can change the color here, I can make it a grid, I can make it a graph, so if I'm taking notes, so the whiteboard app, it's really well researched and well built. It's a utility, and I don't have to depend on say like third-party UWP apps for drawing. Look at this, you have a nice little graph at your disposal and this is also on the Pro 7. For those who did ask about the last little bonus part for our native ARM64 apps. So honorable mentions are the VLC video app. There is an ARM64 version of that. So if you're downloading any offline videos and you're going on a flight, VLC in my opinion is the best video media player. Or Bandzip and Twitter apps and some of the UWP apps. Games, not that you're really gonna game, but Minecraft runs optimized on the Surface Pro X along with some games like GTA San Andreas. There's a big community out there, um, Reddit forums and some XDA developer forums that are waiting to expand the Windows on ARM compatibility list. So I will, I can link those below so you can check those out. These are my five app recommendations to really elevate your Surface Pro X and your Surface Pro 7 experience. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you so much for your support. I hope to continue these videos um, as long as we can. Um, like and subscribe, leave comments. I'll try and get to every each and every comment below on some of your asks. Again, you guys make this possible, so I owe it all to you. Thank you so much, and we'll see you in the next review. Okay, bye guys.